but in the meantime, we'll start with the ones we already have. So first question for Sasha from Sergey. Uh, what's the key difference between bull shark and tusk? Hey, yeah, so um, yeah, task is an asynchronous protocol, um, basically the implementation of Dag Rider, and Bullshark is two versions. One is the asynchronous with the fast path, that uh, if, if the network is synchronous, you can commit, you can commit much faster, and the other version is just a standalone partially asynchronous version, so the difference is the, in, the, in the networking assumption. So task is also a randomized protocol. It has to use randomness in order to, uh, to, uh, to synchronize the FLP result. Otherwise, you can do asynchronous consensus. And uh, Bullshark, is, Bullshark relies on the partial synchrony. All right, thank you. So question for Yuan. Uh, I, I know that she didn't want to get into that because it was going to take time, but I'm actually very interested in the in the engineering and implementation questions that, that you had to skip. Could you just shed some quick lights within the time that we have on, on what those might be? Yeah, sure, uh, of course. Uh, first one is like uh, for the uh, MVB module we use, we need to implement uh, an, a termination certificate. So that, uh, that means um, once a node quit from the protocol, it actually generated uh, uh, a verifiable uh, certificate consisting of digital signatures. It can just uh, transfer uh, this certificate to other nodes and uh, everyone else can verify it. This is very important because this can help uh, a node to safely quit and clean uh, MVB from its memory. Uh, and it just needs to send one message and to the other node and it's, uh, it's okay. And the second uh, part is very important is like uh, we need to, actually we need uh, each, uh, uh, each MVB's message uh, each uh, actually each MVB to take take the, uh, the the termination certificate from the previous MVB. This is important because uh, this can actually try to uh, prevent adversary uh, just uh, flooding the consensus node by sending a future message, uh, some fake uh, some fake future message. And because if we take the certificate in, inside every message, and the message no longer can be forged. And the third part is like we find uh, we find a phenomenon that uh, the MVB's predicate function actually uh, actually try to verify a lot of certificates that already be uh, verified inside the broadcast instance. So we try to uh, save CPU time on on skipping some uh, verifications that actually already be, uh, be be verified. So we just do. A simple equality check before actually go to check the uh, certificates, and this is also uh, we find this also can help a lot and to save a lot of CPU time. And basically, these are three optim optimizations. And of course, the first one I think I mentioned in the talk I think is we use MVB extension protocol, and we believe this can save a lot of uh, a lot uh, benefits resource from the MVB and. And uh, I believe this, we also can confirm uh, this can make uh, uh, a lot of improvement by the experiments, actually. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, okay, yeah, Sado, uh, question for you. I Well, first, uh, just the comments, I guess. I think your claim of widespread rigorous testing of BFT protocols might be slightly optimistic. But my actual question is, you mentioned that, you know, existing solutions make uh, always involve a trade-off between either sort of re-implementation efforts or, or resource uh, use. Uh, where does Phantom and, well, I guess Delphi specifically lie on, on, on that sort of spectrum of, of trade-off? So Phantom does not make any trade-offs in this regard because it operates in, um, in um, virtual time. So other tools are either pure simulators or pure emulators. So with emulators, you are running real code and this takes up a really large number of resources. So as your system scale grows, you have to keep adding nodes in order to be able to conduct large scale simulations, um, emulations. But with simulators, you are basically using abstractions 
But since Phantom runs in virtual time and uses this system called interception techniques to hook the applications in the simulator, it can scale uh, pretty well. So, and it doesn't need to make any trade-offs in this regard. It, it is just in that sweet spot. I hope I was able to answer the question. <laughs> Yes, yes, very much so. All right, so uh, back to back to Sasha. A uh, question from Marco. Uh, to which number of nodes have you tested slash scaled this family of protocols? Uh, 100. It, it might go beyond, but it's really, really expensive at this point already. All right. Well, since that was... Uh, very efficient answer. I'll just ask you a, a second question in a row. Well, and so from was a very simple question to answer. Yeah, th that is true. <laughs> yes, but yes. And so a question from Nikita: uh, Does the protocol advance rounds based on only the reception on N oh, sorry of NF vertices from a given round and no timeouts? Oh yeah, that's a very good question. I, I didn't have time to go into it. I have uh, I explain in the blog post you can read and like longer talks you can also see the the full thing. But yes, of course, it's a partial and synchronous protocol. You cannot avoid timeouts, at least in theory. So uh, in Bullshark, what we do is that we use the timeouts uh, in every round uh, for 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 wait for wait for the end call because we it's it's like it's two conditions. First is to uh, First n minus f nodes, and then if the leader is uh, one of them, the leader is the guy who's supposed to give you the anchor. If the anchor is one of these n minus f n uh, nodes, that you are good to go. Otherwise, you wait for either to receive it or a timeout. Um, yeah, you should you should check our new paper. We get rid of timeouts completely. So uh, very very cool result. Yep. All right. So you are next. Uh... Well, actually, I, I'll ask this one. Sorry, did you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, question: uh, Do you? I mean, how how does the how, how does the protocol deal with with network congestion? I mean, is that uh, uh, does it really have a big impact? And and do you do you have mechanisms to to deal with it? Uh, I think the network congestion. Probably in our model is handled by the underlying networking layer, for example, the TCP. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Maybe, so the, yeah. yeah. So, sorry, go ahead, please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And maybe, maybe if, if there is network congestion, congestion, maybe the TCP is sending message very slow, but uh, eventually it can maybe help us to, to reach a goal to eventually deliver a message. Yeah. Yeah, I hope that uh, helps uh, give the answer. Yeah, let's let's say yes. <laughs> but <laughs> but yes, no. Uh, I mean, we we in the interest of time. <laughs> but yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Sadok, uh, I, well, well, this is a, I, I guess another question of curiosity. But do you know uh, by heart, or do you have the numbers? for how the, the delta that you mentioned between simulation and real world data uh, evolves as a, as a percentage of, of the, the ops per second? Because basically the, the figures were, were presented as, as absolute numbers and it was, it was hard to compare uh, along the, the, the chart. Sorry, I don't have that by heart. <laughs> okay, well, we could see that it was decreasing in any case. And, and I guess, yeah. your, your, I mean, your explanation is, is obviously convincing. I, I was just curious about that. So do we have time? Yes, well, one last round of questions, I guess. So, sorry, let me just check whether there are new ones in Swag. I don't think so. So back to Sasha, uh, you, you teased us a bit with, uh, with Shoal and, and your, your new paper. Uh, can you in two minutes uh, just just shed some light on on what the directions are there? Yeah, I was I was afraid of this question. I actually didn't know whether to answer it or not. But uh, yeah, let me just tease you a little bit. So um, we get rid of the um, we realize how to do pipelining and save a lot of latency there, and we also realize how to do the reputation directly on the DAG, and um, so it can uh, it can it can work very well when you have failures. And then with this contribution together, we actually realized how to get how to get rid of timeouts completely. So the dark construction gives you some kind of a clock 
and which is uh, which is which which allows you to get rid of timeouts because if you think about a leader based consensus if you don't have a timeout and you have a bad leader you will, you will stall forever you will just be stuck uh, here um the idea is the duck the duck keeps advancing and then you don't you, you have another mechanism to wake you up while you're waiting so you keep advancing and and, for, and you keep building the duck where, where even if you have failures and then uh, and this is this is very cool. We give analysis and we show that this property is we actually achieve much be, much better property than the optimistic responsiveness. And we can and you can't really avoid the timeouts because otherwise there will be some conventing the FLP results. But the scenario in which you require timeouts is is very very unlikely in practice. Um, in which case we can always fall back to timeouts. So in practice you will never have to use timeouts. It's it's very cool. Yep. All right, thank you. And Yuan, I, I have a, a similar uh, forward-looking question. You, you mentioned that a challenge is, is increasing scalability in, in node count. Do you have any concrete uh, plans or, or improvement directions for along those lines? Uh, yeah, we do some tests. One is to we try to uh, change change the implementation of the Chrome certificate. Currently, we use just the ECDIC. Uh, by by concatenating ECDSA signatures, and right now we do some uh, preliminary tests by using batched snore, and we find a batched snore signature actually uh, can do a little bit help when the scale is actually uh, a little bit large. For example, like uh, two hundred, uh, some numbers like this, and this is one one hint. Maybe I can give for now. <laughs> Uh, thank you, and hope maybe this gives some hint, but maybe not a, a perfect answer. All right, and final question, this time for Sadok and also uh, forward-looking. Uh, you you mentioned that, well, one of the items on your roadmap is is adding this computational model, so you, so you can be more accurate when, when CPU uh, bound instead of, instead of network bound. Uh, you also had a reference to to the attacker model in the in the paper, right? So, uh, what are your your plans there in terms of of further improvements? Uh, so, we are planning on implementing the twin strategy to conduct uh, attacks to simulate attacks. Um, yeah, otherwise, not much has happened in this regard, other from the ideas. Yeah. <laughs> 